what Simulate is doing is provide, providing visibility, providing the security professionals and the companies an understanding of what is their current security posture, mm. what is their current risk level um, from security gaps that they have in their organization. Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakian. We are still at COF as the Congress on the Future of Engineering Software for our second annual partnership with them. We are now with Iran Abramovitz. Hello. Hey, Thanks Alan. Thanks for coming on to the show. Nice meeting you. Really appreciate it. And Iran just won the startup competition at COFES. Yeah, innovation uh, competition, uh, innovation companies, innovation technology. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and he just won that. It's super cool. And we're going to be talking about his company, Simulate. And Simulate is doing breach and attack simulation, how secure organization is assessing different attack vectors. And he was previously at Microsoft three years and just a really cool journey that we're going to be unpacking here. So tell us about this journey. How did you end up becoming who you are today? You know, Alan, it's a, it's a good question. It's a, it's a long journey. I've actually started in security back in 2007, if I'm not mistaken. I worked at a company um, that did uh, malware detection and malware stopping. Um, I took a break came back to security in uh, Secure Islands. Uh, we had a very cool tool for security orchestration. We sold this to Microsoft, which is now part of Microsoft Information Protection. And in Microsoft, I was in different roles, global black belts, the experts of security for Microsoft, nice. um, Cyber Solution Group, um, a very good group that is focusing on the top strategic customers of Microsoft helping our customers to understand uh, what is the journey that Microsoft is doing in security uh, versus what they need and how to uh, combine these two needs. Uh, in the last role, I really was part of a product strategy team in, in Microsoft. Um, and then Simulate approached me with this cool technology and the reason that I've decided to uh, go to Microsoft, from Microsoft to Simulate is really based on the journey that I had. So lots of professional security professionals that I was I've been spoken to across the globe, um, regardless of the verticals, whether it's financials, banking industry, insurance, manufacturing, healthcare, uh, really, you name it, law, um, where public sector. Where privacy is needed and security Where privacy is needed, <laughs> where security is important, and let's face it, where it isn't today. Um, all of these professionals, um, I've sold them so many different types of technologies, but they all had the same challenges. Understanding how effective are they, or... Um, yeah, I understand the need in, in this, but I don't have the budget uh, from the board. They don't really understand what I need, why I need this. And when the uh, founder of yeah. Simulate, uh, Eyal Vaxman, approached me, um, and he is a guy that I knew in the past, and he told me about this technology and about the platform, I said, yes, this is something that customers do need. So I jumped ship from this amazing company that is called Microsoft, um, and I came back to the uh, startup world to be innovative and really to provide customers with some cutting edge technologies around cyber. And uh, yeah. So now let me take a guess. I'm just gonna take a guess. And okay, you can, educated you can, guess. I would an educated guess, correct. So is this, this sort of, um, you, s you potentially uh, set up a, uh, a, a very strong uh, security for your, for your precious data or information and then the security is then, you run simulated attacks on the security and then wherever the, the stress points are, you build those up, you kind of have potentially 
machine learning to learn about where the stress points are, build those so, up? I will, I will explain. Um, was I 10%, 20 zero? <laughs> I would say 30%. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. It's not too bad. Yeah. yeah. It's not too bad. Yeah. Well, you haven't heard about the product yet. Yes, so, correct. Uh, and I, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so organizations today, uh, security professionals, security organizations, uh, and again, regardless of the size of the organization or the vertical, everyone is spending um, a lot of effort in securing their organization. You know, every organization to their extent, to their limit of resources and budget. But everyone is buying what they think is best for their, so for their organization in order to secure them from cyber attacks. Whether the reason is to steal data or to basically stop production of these companies. So security is really top of mind for any, of course, security professionals, but chief information officers, CEOs, board of directors, risk officers, it's top of mind because cyber attacks are real and cyber attacks are happening on a daily basis. In the day that we are now recording this, um, we basically heard that this is a record breaking, um, a record breaking day from the perspective that the most the largest amount of records have been leaked. Um, two billion records. Two billion records. Two billion records For of what? private information of individuals and professionals. We're talking about email addresses. We're talking about, um, thank God, not social security numbers, but phone numbers, addresses, uh, mortgage information in wow. some cases. Wow. So what two billion records. What was this leak? Who, who um, was it by? Do we know? Um, so it's a company that is doing verification for marketing companies. Oh. So they own a huge amount of uh, data in a few databases and that were compromised. And who hacked into those databases? Um, do we know? I don't know at this but, moment. But it's, this it's is crazy. It was just published today. Uh, yeah, but this is crazy. All the, Yeah, there's tons of these. The 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 publishings of cyber attacks and just cyber war in general, such an insane field that is that has constant geopolitical pressure is all yeah. over it and yeah, and corporate pressure from across countries and even inside of countries. Yeah. So just for example of magnitude of what is the impact of such cyber attacks, um, just 20 days ago, uh, Norsk Hydro, it's an aluminum factory in Norway, got hit with ransomware. In the past 20 days, they've analyzed the amount of damage that it cost them. So far, 20 days, it's around $40 million. And it's much cheaper to pay you to help prevent this from happening. So I'm not preventing, but what Simulate is doing is provide, providing visibility, providing the security professionals and the companies an understanding of what is their current security posture? Mm. What is their current risk level um, from security gaps that they have in their organization? Their posture, interesting. Their security posture. How well it, they're positioned exactly. to, to fight, fend off the attack. Exactly. And one of the things that is extremely important today is to have a repeatable process in order to increase your security posture. Mm -hmm. And this repeatable process is requiring a platform, a tool that will continuously, automatically, and customizable, and fully customizable to execute these attacks in order to understand where is our security gaps, to assess them and prioritize them. The prioritization is usually done uh, half by the solution and half by the security professional because we know what the risks are, but we don't know what is the business of the customer. And the combination of these really provides yeah. where the major risks are. And we also provide recommendations how to mitigate. It is up to the uh, enterprise to mitigate, whether it's to change configuration, change work process, or buy a new solution or a better solution yeah. than what they currently have. Do you and have then validate like it. 
Mm. So it's a circle, yeah, yeah. a process, a repeatable process that is required by, by various uh, security frameworks today, risk frameworks. Do you guys have like 12 points or something? Do you have a certain amount of points that show that you know, this would be the ideal security posture and like you have these 12 points and then if they were so missing any then... So it's a good question. When you are looking at a cyber attack or what we call a modern cyber attack or advanced persistent threat in the uh, security lingo, um, it basically have three steps. One step, the first step is the infiltration, the front door step. How an attacker infiltrates the organization. Um, the second step is the actual uh, exploitation. So the attacker is in, they need to get hold of an endpoint. And then there is the process that is called lateral movement. This is the post exploitation. In the lateral movement, the attacker is trying to get to high valued assets in the organization, whether it's uh, files, emails, databases, um, and basically gain domain domination through getting admin password on the domain controllers. And the last stage is either flattening the organization using the ransomware or anything else, but also data exfiltration. Let's assume the attacker doesn't really even want to be known that there is an attack just to find the information and exfiltrate it. And what Simulate is doing, we have divided this attack kill chain to seven different vectors and we are testing the security controls in each and every one of them and providing a risk score for each and every one of these. Interesting. So you test the organization's security yourselves. Correct. Through your own attacking of their security to see how well they do. Exactly. So organizations have email security controls, web gateway security controls, DLP solutions, endpoint solutions. We are basically attacking these solutions. We are challenging these solutions in a capture the flag game. Mm -hmm. Once we are done, once we are in, we have captured the flag. We know exactly what was the method that we have used. And we're actually uh, mapping this to uh, a common, uh, now common uh, practice of uh, mapping this to the MITRE attack framework. It's an organization that is doing some mapping of uh, attack technologies in order to help organizations really um, increase and enhance their security posture. One interesting thing that uh, we are doing in addition to this is our constant research, our research team is constantly researching new attacks. So whenever there is a new attack in the wild that we heard of, we are actually looking and we are working with international certs and other companies to get some insights on this attack and we are immediately implementing this attack into our solution so that a day or two days after the attack has happened, you can already test yourself, am I protected against this? And this uh, Norsk Hydro that I've mentioned before, uh, basically a day after the attack happened, you already had this version of attack in our solution and you would be able to check for yourself whether you're protected or not. Correct, so you're constantly learning just like an autonomous vehicle is learning from the decisions that it is being made as it's driving and then updating the network of cars similarly to yeah. what you guys are doing. So it's not an automated process. Uh, there is a lot of human expertise that is needed. Definitely. In order to uh, reverse engineer these attacks and build them in a non-malicious way into the, solu into the solution. Yeah, yeah. Because when we are attacking an organization, we don't want to cause any harm. Yeah, yeah. It's really light, really no impact on the environment, on the production yeah. environment. So yeah. it really requires uh, light touch and an expert touch from our uh, team of engineers and researchers. Yeah, you work with the organization's top security and then you work with them on making sure that the way that you're using Simulate on their, um, their walls of security is a way that is agreed upon by both parties that you're gonna yep. be Yeah, it's, it's very light, it's 
um, all of our customers, we never had a problem of, uh, hey, we, you caused damage into uh, totally. our uh, production environment. You're just strengthening the walls. You're strengthening yeah. them. I'm, I'm giving them the them. visibility to test, test the walls. their security controls, test their mo walls and moats. Walls and moats, yeah, 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 their walls and moats. Interesting, what are the seven attack vectors? So, you look at uh, email. So, one of the uh, main methods for uh, attacking an organization the getting into the front door or passing the front door is through uh, three mech main mechanisms. Email, uh, web pages that contain malicious content, or web application that an attacker is um, attempt attempting to uh, compromise and take advantage of a web server and execute remote commands. So we're looking at the email protection, we're looking at the web uh, uh, gateway filtering system and the web application firewall. We are challenging them. Um, you probably heard about phishing, mm -hmm. phishing and spear mm -hmm. phishing. Phishing is a method that is designed to either do two things either um, trick a person to open uh, malicious content inside the email or direct them to, the, uh, to a malicious web page. Mm -hmm. So we are testing the email security yeah. to understand if a malicious payload was got were brought in or the web filtering gateway, whether a user that accidentally clicks on a link from a phishing email will go and reach a, malicious, uh, a website that contains malicious content. And we also have a phishing mechanism inside our solution. So these are the four front door uh, pre-exploitation attack vectors or attack surfaces. Yeah. Um, the next one, the exploitation one, is really the endpoint. So once the attacker got in, he needs to execute some malicious code on the endpoint. So we are looking at the endpoint protection solution, and we are looking at uh, what we call an EDR, endpoint detection and response solution, basically to challenge them whether they are protecting against the attacks that we have, worms, trojans, uh, ransomware attacks, and uh, the more standard uh, malware and antiviruses. Um, after this, we have the lateral movement, where mm -hmm. the attacker is moving throughout the organization to uh, find the high-valued assets. And this is where we are challenging the uh, user and entity behavior analytics solutions or the SIM solution, um, security incident event management solution of the customer. We even challenge their own SOC team, so their security operations center, mm -hmm. to be able to detect uh, whether something is happening. Yeah. Um, and the last attack vector or uh, attack surface is really to exfiltrate information out. So yeah. let's assume I've done everything mm -hmm. and now I've found this type of information, whether it's images or CAD drawings or uh, files which contain sensitive information on merger and acquisitions and financials to try and send this information outside. So these are the seven main vectors and we have this immediate threat vector that we call it uh, or a module that basically combines uh, both the email, the endpoint, and the uh, web gateway um, that you can actually test new types of mm. uh, attacks, new threats that are coming. And this is what we are adding almost on a daily basis now. So then the, the, when, when, you, when you do add this in to a company, then they, 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 th th you're, you're simultaneously testing out their security posture and you're also um, helping consult with them on making those fixes to the security yeah posture. so we basically identify the security gaps uh, and part of the solution is also to provide uh, product agnostic recommendations on how to mitigate these yes yes cool and it's up to the uh, enterprise to take these results and these recommendations and either do some configuration changes or work process changes 
or to go and seek a different and new solution that addresses these problems. Okay. Yeah. And these, then, yeah. these reports are then also used in order to, let's assume I need to get more budget from my management, uh, from the board. To get the security, so now How it's less of a... How do you actually reflect the security, yeah. go the security gap, the risk? It's not a subjective statement it's anymore. It's not an assumption. Yeah. It's a proof, it's a proof, hard yeah. proof, it's yeah. a report based yeah. on an attack simulation that we have executed. And then you can actually have the, um, the, the agnostic recommendation for the fix, and then you have an exact monetary amount that you need to, to fix the, the security so issue. So we are not yeah. getting into the monetary stuff, it's, uh, but for we are, we're doing the recommendation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it's up to the security professional to go and seek the assistance of their security partner, security consultant company. But then it's not like an, them it's not us. an abstract number for them anymore. It's an actual, like you said, hard exactly. data and they can actually present this is exactly how much money we also need to fix it. So it's like so it's it's, in, it's very interesting. I have a couple I have a couple other thoughts for you. One of them is um, let's let's talk about the um, the role of um, of what your uh, uh, how you program the um, those those attack vectors like how do you send a a um, an attack on an on an, a, like a controlled attack on an organization yeah so you know it's a very good question and it's a very scary questions for uh, people that are listening to hey attack simulation mm -hmm. what will mm -hmm. be the impact on my productive production environment yeah, yeah. so let me put you in ease. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a cloud service, and from the perspective of the, so there are two types of attacks. One is external, and one is internal. Uh, from external, we are looking at the uh, sending the emails, or um, attacking the web application firewall, challenging the web application firewall. Um, the rest of the attacks are done from the inside. So we have an agent that you need to install, it's in any size of organization, you install anything between one agent and 15 agents. But these are the numbers we are talking about. We're not talking about hundreds or thousands or the entire organization. And we're doing this usually, except one case on a non-production uh, machines. Because you need to remember what we are challenging is not your actual IT environment, we are challenging your security controls on the IT environment. So you can give me any machine, a non-production machine, but you have all of your security controls around it, and I will challenge them. With whatever file you want on the inside. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, cool. So I'm not disrupting the yeah, uh, yeah, actual day-to-day -day work of cool, the organization. Cool. So That's this great. is really with no yeah. impact to the organization, yeah. no, harm, no harm is done. Very smart. So you basically take all the security infrastructure from the company, put it onto uh, something that has none of the uh, impact on the company, and then you do your attack simulation on, on that. And, exactly. And that's great. Yeah, that makes it's, a lot of sense. It's usually called golden image or golden images, oh, okay. where, they, uh, where there's a new employee, for example, and they need to give a computer to a new employee then they upload the golden image into this endpoint and then they already have all of their security controls on oh, this endpoint cool. and you install our agent on an endpoint like this whether it's a physical hardware or a virtual machine and you can test the str the, the security posture much quicker with a simulation potentially than um, if someone's trying to manually go and and test yeah. all of the different so areas. There's a lot of uh, penetration testing companies in the world, and uh, when you're looking at this, um, and a lot of companies are required or want to do pen testing, um, it's very expensive to do uh, pen testing. So it usually, and it's very thorough. Usually, pen testing is very thorough, but very narrow. Yeah. yeah. So the pen tester is trying to penetrate for a specific path, the narrow is as possible because they want to uh, finalize the penetration testing, get the report and continue. Uh, what we're doing, and we're working with pen testers, we're working with partners that are pen testers and adding our technology into their tools. 
So a pen tester company can actually take our tool and use it in order to have this broad attack against the organization and then use the results to fast understand how they can penetrate so you get a much more elaborated pen testing result and then you can offer also to the organization to the enterprise that hired you to actually hey let's run this in a more continuous method and not once a year or once a quarter interesting you also work with pen testers and then how about on the on the um on the on the on the machine learning side of things tell us about how you leverage artificial intelligence in what you're doing it seems like if there's certain structural weaknesses that you could potentially if you fail at once maybe you up the up up you yeah. up the ante a bit and you hit it again and see what yeah yeah, yeah so so i don't really like the uh, concept of uh, ai in this okay but there's definitely machine learning in the best practices that we have okay so I'll, I'll just give an example around this so we have around the email testing alone we have about 15,000 permutations of malicious payloads that we can send that's crazy but wow. the best practices that we actually engage is not sending all of these because it's just waste of time because if you are protected against something specific then yeah. it doesn't make sense to send 4,000 examples totally. of something similar totally. because you're probably already protected so we're sending the first 50 mm -hmm. and we see what got in what got out and what didn't what mm -hmm. was blocked yeah, yeah. and then based on these results we'll send another 50 or another 100 which um, looks at uh, a specific aspect that we were able to penetrate basically yeah. once we're in let's widen this hole and understand sure. how big this gap is sure, sure. so this is the machine learning that we're using and this is where uh, it's really important to also customize the attack you don't want to just throw attacks in you want to understand exactly what yeah. the attacks that you're doing so let's take for example um, you probably heard of patching Tuesday where the big companies are releasing all the patch and now you patch all of your machines so let's call it ransomware Wednesday let's execute attacks that imitates ransomware every Wednesday interesting and I'll get a result yeah. of am I protected against ransomware every Wednesday and I know how to mitigate this That's very so interesting. the attacks yeah. can be customizable yeah yeah and then maybe one of the last questions I want to ask you is um, well I guess maybe maybe a couple more but this one this one's very close to to my heart it's like I feel as though we're kind of heading towards a global surveillance state yep. and it like that security and privacy have to be at the highest level of cryptography and all this kind of stuff because we maybe haven't spiritually evolved yet if we yeah. if we if we better collectively evolved we might might not have some of the malicious attackers yeah. right and so um th it almost seems as though we could have went on a way of complete trust and transparency but in a way with all of the unfortunate circumstances that we have as well as fortunate ones we're heading towards a place of needing this yeah. very high security and very high privacy do you align with that unfortunately um we do need to evolve ourselves and the way we are thinking and the way we are handling our data and our identity and this is because of rogue organizations and i'm not talking about uh, rogue states i'm talking about criminal organizations that are using our data uh, for their own needs selling our data and the market the black market for uh, stolen data is is massive mm -hmm. um, so I'm doing this with myself and of course my uh, wife uh, we need to make sure that our data is secure we need to make sure that our identity is secured we need to use two-factor authentication and one of the things that I would love to have yeah. as much as possible from government organizations or basically any company that holds our data is to only allow access to this data based on two-factor authentication yeah. or other 
um, new methods yes. of identification. It's also called two-factor, but uh, facial recognition is something mm -hmm. now sure, that sure. most uh, of the people have in their cell phones mm -hmm. or a thumbprint reader sure. in the cell phone. And this is something that I really encourage every person. If you, ha you have an identity in a website, whether it's Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, Google, um, any government uh, website that allows uh, two-factor authentication, please enable this. This is extremely important for your information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, we're, you know, we're at, we're at COFES, we're here with, you know, uh, on behalf of, um, of engineering software and the importance of that. Where do you see um, Simulate's role in engineering software? So, so that's a great question, Alan. Um, and when I came here, I had doubts, I have to say. I'm, I'm not from the engineering space. But uh, talking to all of these uh, smart people in the industry, I figure out something that I probably should have thought about this beforehand. There's a lot of intellectual property here. Yeah. Um, and it, it can be in the small companies that they are developing uh, new technologies, new innovative technologies. It can be in the small technology companies that are developing for the large ones. And of course the large companies, lots of information, uh, intellectual property that they need to protect. And again, I'm sure their security teams are spending the budget in order to secure themselves mm -hmm. um, to the best of their knowledge. But the problem is that the knowledge, their, the best of their knowledge is based on assumptions and not based on true facts. And Simulate is the tool that will provide them with this visibility of what is their effectiveness of their security solution, how they are, where they are most vulnerable, will give them a platform to do this uh, repeatable process, will give them the ability to understand whether they are protected from uh, new threats. And one thing that is extremely important, especially for the large companies, how their supply chain is secured. Yeah. So this is something that we are considering now when we started talking with some companies about how their supply chain is being tested for security. Yeah. And this is something that they can use in order to do this. So it's regardless of the fact that this is engineering software um, convention, every company needs to be able to protect their assets, their uh, high-valued assets. Yeah. And we help them with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the last question would be, you know, we're heading into this exponential technology age. What would you say is, if not the most important skill set for kids and for adults to learn? Well, you know, it's, it's an amazing question. And as having kids of my own, um, I think that uh, STEM is, is very important. I would love to see more I would love to see more uh, girls also doing STEM, so science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Um, but what I would love to see kids today is actually talking with each other and not texting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the millennials. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This has been so enlightening. Really, I'm, I'm loving what you're putting it's forth with 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 simulate like it's just it's s simulating attacks to to bring up defense and to bring up privacy and security it's just it's yep. very fascinating yeah congratulations on winning too that thank you alan yeah this has been such a pleasure and thank you so much and thanks thank everyone you. for tuning in we greatly appreciate it. check out the links below to simulate also check out the links below to kofes let us know your thoughts in the comments we'd love to hear from you Share more of these conversations with the people around you, in your communities, online, with your family and friends, coworkers. Also, check out the links to Kofez as well. And also, support the artists and entrepreneurs that you believe in. Support us, support Simulation below. And go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you soon. Peace. Thank you.